Okay, so kinematics is the study of motion without considering its causes, as opposed to dynamics, which we'll get into like in the fourth chapter, which is the study of motion when you do consider uh, the causes of motion such as force and energy. So in this chapter, chapter two, we examine the simplest type of kinematics, motion along a straight line. This is called one-dimensional kinematics. And then in chapter three, we get into two-dimensional kin kinematics where uh, the motion can go along curved paths, such as a car turning or a projectile uh, curving as it goes, uh, goes through space. So when you start with position, uh, these cyclists can be described by their position relative to these buildings and the canal. So there's usually some uh, fixed coordinate system. And sometimes it's the x-axis. So if you define an x-axis, you can numerically define your position as being your distance from uh, the origin where x is zero. So this origin and this x-axis uh, define a particular reference frame uh, relative to which we can measure a position. Displacement is the change in position. So, for example, uh, actually in this textbook they use x with subscript 0, x sub 0, uh, to be initial position, and x with subscript f to be final position. So delta x, the displacement, is x final minus x initial. So if it ended at 3.5 and it began at 1.5, then your displacement is plus 2 meters. Uh, distance is a little different. So displacement is just simply, here's the equation, delta x is uh, x final minus x initial. So for example, if your path starts at x equals 0, goes all the way to x equals 4, and returns back to 3 meters, then the displacement is just your final, which is plus 3, minus your initial, so that's just uh, plus 3. However, your distance that you traveled is actually, you, all went, you know you went to the 4 and then back to the 1, so the distance is 4 plus 1 is 5 meters. So displacement uh, can be positive or negative, depending on whether you end up to the right or to the left of your starting position, and distance is always positive. So let's give it a try. If you start from home, and you walk 3 kilometers to the grocery store, and then you get back home again, what's uh, d, the distance you traveled, and uh, delta x, your displacement during that time. I'll give you a minute to think about that, press uh, pause, and then we'll look at your answer. Okay, so hopefully you chose uh, d. The distance that you traveled was 3 to get to the store, and then plus 3 to get back home, so that's uh, 6 kilometers. However, your displacement was 0. Whenever your final position equals your initial position, so you start at home, end at home, that means your displacement is 0. So a vector is any quantity that has both magnitude and direction. Displacement is, uh, is definitely a vector. Also velocity, acceleration, force are other examples of vector quantities. And in uh, one dimension, so along a line, you can specify your direction just by the plus or minus sign. A scalar is a quantity that has a magnitude but it never has any direction. So examples of scalars include distance, also speed, which is uh, the magnitude of your velocity. Uh, temperature is a scalar. Mass is a scalar quantity as well. So uh, in this book and in a lot of books, they have a tendency usually to define uh, positive uh, displacements as being towards the right and negative displacements as being towards the left for horizontal motion. If you have vertical motion, then usually uh, positive uh, displacement is up and negative displacement is down. So that's just a convention and sometimes it's convenient to, to mix this up and try different conventions, but you should specify this. So I thought I'd mention it. Okay, so time. Before we get into velocity, we need to consider time. So time, it's hard to define in the dictionary, but it's something to do with change. It's uh, the interval over which change occurs. So any actual measurement of time is calibrated by a comparison with some standard clock. And elapsed time, delta t, is the difference, t final minus uh, the initial. So for example, if the lecture starts at 11.10 a.m. and it ends at noon, then the elapsed time of the lecture is 50 minutes. Okay, so now that we have displacement and elapsed time, we can define our average velocity as being the displacement divided by the elapsed time. 
and there's a little bar over the V indicating that this is uh, average velocity. So notice that this uh, velocity is a vector because displacement is a vector and elapsed time is a scalar. So uh, the average velocity is in the same direction as the displacement. But it's, a, it's different than the displacement because it's, it's scaled differently by the uh, 1 over the uh, delta t. And the instantaneous velocity, v, uh, also known as uh, velocity, is the velocity at any specific instant in time. And you can find that by taking the average velocity but taking the limit as this delta t goes to 0. So average speed is the distance traveled divided by the elapsed time. And average speed doesn't take into account various uh, instantaneous speeds along the way. For for example, if you drove and you know the distance, total distance on your odometer was 200 kilometers and it took you two hours, then your average speed was 100 kilometers per hour. Now that doesn't mean that your instantaneous speed was 100 the whole time. So instantaneous speed, also known as speed, is your speed at, at any instant. That's what's read off on your speedometer. So if your average speed was 100 kilometers per hour, you may have been driving uh, 120 for part of it. You may have uh, got caught in traffic jams and, and been driving at you know, 50 or even zero for a little bit. Um, but your average speed is still uh, 100 kilometers per hour. So let's give this a try. You drive, again, you drive for, uh, now three kilometers to the grocery store and then back home, and that whole trip takes you half an hour. So what was your average speed and your average velocity? I'll let you uh, press pause, think about it, come up with an answer, and then resume. Okay, so uh, hopefully you got 12 for the speed. So that comes from uh, 6 kilometers divided by 0 0.5 hours. Uh, 6 divided by 0 0.5 is 12. And the velocity actually is the displacement divided by the time. So the displacement was 0 because your final and your initial uh, was the same. So your average velocity there is actually 0, which is funny. So if you make now a plot of position versus time for that same example from give it a try, uh, you start at zero position, you get to the grocery store, it's six kilometers away, and that's in 15 minutes, so 0 0.25 hours. And then you return back down, uh, back to zero position at, uh, at 0.5 hours. So it turns out that velocity is the slope of position versus time. So the slope here is positive 12 and the slope here is negative 12. So we can actually make a plot of velocity in kilometers per hour versus the time in hours. Let's do that now. Looks like this. So that uh, first part of the slope was plus 12. So the velocity plus 12 kilometers per hour. And then you suddenly turn around and your velocity becomes negative 12 kilometers per hour as you come back home. You're going in a uh, in towards the left, so that's a negative uh, direction for your velocity. And this is how the average of velocity can be zero, because the plus 12 plus the minus 12 equals zero. Okay, so let's finish up this video, sort of where we started. This time, just to make things a little more specific, I'm going to take a hockey puck and move it fast from zero to two meters, and then bring it back slow from two down to one meter. Then we're going to make graphs of position, versus time and also instantaneous velocity versus time. And you can see we've got a stopwatch down there. So let's hit start. And stop. Now let's look at the graphs. Okay, so here are some screenshots from the video you just saw. And you're being asked to, given, uh, given video data of the motion, make plots of position versus time and velocity versus time. So first, uh, let's make a table of the important data from the video. So we have, I guess, x and t. So it starts at x equals 0, at time t equals 0 seconds. That's the first frame there when the puck's on the left. At uh, the next frame has x two, at 2 meters and 2.99 seconds. And the third uh, frame has x back at 1 meter and the time is 6.60 seconds. And what we'll assume is that the puck moves smoothly between these three moments in time. 
So we can make a plot now and just connect the dots. So the first dot is 0, 0, second dot is 2 and 3, and the third dot is 1 and 6.60 seconds. So that's the position versus time graph. And we note that the velocity is the slope of the position versus time graph, so that would be rise of a run. So if we look at uh, the, the first fast motion to the right, that's V1. Uh, it's going to be plus 2 meters divided by 2.99 seconds. Uh, on my calculator, I got plus uh, 0.67 meters per second. V2 is going to be uh, negative and, and less slopey. So it's negative 1.0 divided by 6.6 uh, .6 minus 2.99 seconds. On my calculator, I got uh, negative 0 0.28 meters per second. So now we're ready to plot those two velocities on a velocity versus time graph. So plus uh, 0 0.67 extends out to about just before 3 seconds, and negative 0.28 starts uh, at 3 seconds. So it, it uh, drops down and goes out all the way to 6.6 .6 seconds. And so it's a straight line graph, and then a quick um, change in velocity, and then another straight line graph.